Well, while the best race car drivers in the world were taking laps at the Indy 500, we had our own little race car driver taking some laps right here. Tom Wiley was at the University of Great Falls trying to satisfy his need for speed. For amateur drivers, autocross racing is the ultimate test of driving ability. Uh, it's fun, competitive, and it keeps everything off the streets. If you practice out here enough, guarantee you're going to develop some skills that will help you steer out of those critical situations that may save your life. That's all well and good, but the best part? Anyone can race. Anybody from the Corvettes to the Chevettes. Intriguing. I had to enter. I wanted to use a work vehicle, but my request to management... No way, Tom. ...was denied. So I was stuck using my personal car, a Toyota Prius, complete with hybrid engine, a stylish bra, and some aerodynamic uh, duct tape. You know, you got a car, any kind of car. We've got a class for it. And they did have a class for me. I wasn't A-stock, that's your Corvettes and your Porsches. I wasn't B-stock either, that's for Hondas and BMWs. And I wasn't C-stock, D-stock, E-stock, F-stock, or even G-stock. The Prius was certified H-stock, which meant I was in a class of my own. I think yeah. you're the only one in HS, so okay. you probably hit, hit I'll probably first win place. first yep. place in the That's HS right. so. class. And after talking to some of my fellow riders, I began to like my chances a little more. Yeah, Prius, that's that's a great car, man. You got instant power right away. Because they're not heavy. You don't have a lot of horsepower to make it get silly. So once I'd signed the waiver and passed the tech inspection, it was time to set about cleaning and danger-proofing the course. Mainly out here, it's safety all the way. And then going over some of the guidelines. The loud cars, there's a couple that have a very minimal exhaust system. Please keep it down. That one really didn't apply to me. This baby purrs. Then I received one final piece of advice. Don't coast. Either full throttle or full brake. Now it was time to race. Gold medal, here I come. And a podium. And let me tell you, once I hit that course, it was pure, unrestrained joy. Well, that was my first experience with uh, autocross racing in the Prius. Got me a time of about 123, which puts me uh, first in the H stock class out of one. First or last, it didn't matter. In the end, autocross is more about having a good time than it is about posting a good time. In Great Falls, Tom Wiley, Montana Sports Network. I think Tom needs a few years before he's ready for Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Well, you know, a couple weeks ago we went mutton busting in East Helen and the fans loved it so much, we decided to do it again at the Last Chance Stampede. Uh, so without further ado, back by popular demand, it's Munchkin Mutton Busting, take two. If stock riding were baseball, then mutton busting would be the minor leagues. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the Last Chance Stampede, tiny cowboys and cowgirls test their mettle against some of the meanest, roughest, yet cuddliest livestock in the business. Now let's meet some of these tiny warriors. First, there's Ben Warner. He's been busting mutton since he was just three years of age. Now he's the ripe old age of... Hi. How old you are? Well, he might have fudged the entry form just a bit because in reality, he's... Four and a half. But whether he's four, five, or 50, little Ben is one of the toughest buckaroos on the planet. How strong are you, man? Really strong. And his ride proved that he busted out of the gates like a rogue rocket ship and held on for a 76-point ride. How strong do you feel now, Ben? I want a trophy. Next up was Tareen, and she faced a daunting task. Through the blind draw, she had to ride the dreaded sheep known only as 9692, who had a bad rep among former riders. Yeah, he's a jumper. Nevertheless, Turin was prepared. Ready. On the readiness scale, she was a reluctant 10. And then it was her turn, her time to shine, her moment of glory. And she got the best of old 9692, a ride good enough for a third place finish. But the best ride of the day belonged to Zach, whose mastery of mutton left him full of raw emotion. Did you know you won tonight? No. Yeah, I'm here to tell you you did. You scored 80 points. How do you feel? Good. Good, yeah. After mutton busting came the steer riding where young bucks like Gage Harris, who had risen through the ranks of sheep, could ply their trades. It was Gage's first time on a steer and he wanted to avoid the fate of other riders he'd watched. She got stepped on. She just got smushed in the mud. So we needed some pointers from the veterans. Sit up. They don't have to lay down. Chest down, chin out. The weight was agonizing. Well, he's probably got plenty of time. But Gage was in the zone. And then it was on. Good luck, Gage. 
But oh no, Gage was stopped short. It was a hurt man. Yes. Not enough to keep him down. You're gonna ride tomorrow? Maybe that's one of the reasons. Okay, one last hand for these wonderful athletes. <laughs> And with the win brings lots of smiles to Centene Stadium. Also bringing smiles, Voyager mascot Orbit. Tom Wiley now with this week's edition of the Fantastic Voyage. Ever since I was a little boy, I've dreamed of only one thing, and that's to be a world famous sports mascot. I can't help it really, they're just so funny and lovable and I want to be that. But unfortunately here I am in Great Falls, Montana, stuck reporting sports for the news. But one day while exploring the studio, I made a discovery. It felt like destiny, and it was at that precise moment that I would become the KFBB. The problem was I had no idea how to be a mascot. All I really knew how to do was report sports. So I sought out some help, and I didn't have to look far. Oh, hey, Tom. You might know him as sports reporter Zach Glover. But during his formative years in Georgia, he was known as the Shiloh General. If anyone could whip me in the shape, it was Zach. I'll do it. But as much as I needed a trainer, I needed a rival even more. And I found one, in Orbit the Wonder Alien. The Great Falls Voyager's mascot is a local celebrity and the Pied Piper of sports fans. Cheers. Orbit, Shiloh, Orbit, 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 my shoe. I must beat him. Zach and I set to trade. Stronger than ever, and it was time to challenge Orbit to a no holds barred one on one mascot throwdown. It was quite clear that Orbit had little respect for me, so he moved to fan interaction. Can't touch this. It was a crushing defeat, but I had one last chance. I had to beat Orbit in his own game. And with that, I was vanquished and resigned to leave the mascotting up to the pros. Reporting from Great Falls with another installment of the Fantastic Voyage, Tom Wiley, News Channel 5 Sports. Well, maintaining good health is something a lot of college athletes take for granted. But as Tom Wiley tells us, that can all change in a heartbeat. Here's this month's Champions of Character. At a heart health event at Benefice Hospital, Amy Wyatt anxiously awaits her turn to speak. So nervous for it, too. <laughs> okay. Amy Wyatt. With a knot in her stomach and nerves on fray, she approaches the podium and begins her story. The day of November 8, 2011, completely changed my life. The things that happened on that day I'll never forget because everything that happened on that day plays in my mind over and over again. It started as a normal day for the UGF sophomore volleyball player, but by the time she began warming up for practice, something had changed. All of a sudden I was in the gym and I noticed that it was getting harder and harder for me to breathe. So uh, I went to the training room and I 
talked to the trainer Brad and I said, Brad, I can't, I can't breathe. And she came in and looked uh, very, very pale and you could tell something was wrong immediately. She described chest pain, she described shortness of breath, um, having some back pain and it not going away, it getting tighter and getting worse. Amy Wyatt was having a heart attack at age 19, something unheard of for someone so young. If you would have asked me before the start of the season if I would ever see one in my career, I would have said absolutely not. Amy was rushed to the hospital where she underwent emergency surgery to remove three blood clots in her heart. I'm really scared and I'm by myself. Her teammates were notified shortly afterwards. We were just devastated and, and uh, you know, we rushed to the hospital right after practice and saw her. And by that point, she, you know, had undergone some, some, a few procedures and was doing a lot better. So, um, but yeah, it's the serious nature of what happened, Amy's prognosis is positive and doctors are hopeful she may suit up for the Argos yet again. Amy's heart has already pretty much healed up and she's going to be playing volleyball again. If she follows a protocol and her heart allows her to do it, um, then we'll be in a safe mode and I think the docs will be pretty happy with releasing her to play. And the heart attack, while a trying event to experience, served as a wake-up call for all involved. I think it's more of my outlook on life now. I feel like I had to grow up a lot, so I don't take everything like for granted. She's a kid that, you know, is an inspiration to everybody, so we want to honor her and, and all of her perseverance. So nearly four months later, with her coach and teammates in the audience, she puts her heart on display in the hopes that others can protect their own. I want people to realize that this is something that can happen to anybody and not just older people because anything can always happen to you, you just have to be aware of it. I'm more understanding of my life and I think more th thoughtfully for everything that I do. In Great Falls, Tom Wiley, ABC5 Sports.